Good evening and welcome to episode 40 of Monday Evening with Alex and Luke. I'm Luke Pichon. And I'm Alex Sabine. And this is our weekly show that documents our travels throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Currently our stay in the Balsams Grand Resort Hotel in Dixville Notch, New Hampshire. Table Rock is behind us. What a beautiful day. And with Table Rock behind us, we're going to show you a food-centric <laughs> episode. Almost everything that we're going to show you today has to do with food, so stay tuned. It's a good one. And get hungry. Outdoor activity. Picture cross-country skiing through the beautiful Balsams Wilderness, when your stomach starts rumbling and you realize you forgot to eat breakfast. And then you wish, man, couldn't there just be someone in the middle of the woods here to feed me? And then as if out of a dream you see a frittata and a sign that says feed station one? So you eat the frittata and are still a bit hungry. So you keep skiing and in the middle of the woods you see Balsam's executive chef Joshua Berry. And he says to you, We're at station two right now. I got a couple of apprentices with me. We're uh, getting ready to start serving some chili. We have some grilled chicken sandwiches. Um, we got some, you know, some, some nice tortilla crisps, Powerade, water. We get a bunch of this stuff all ready to go. At this point you realize you must be dreaming. So you decide, hey, I'm just gonna keep on skiing. And then you realize you're about to eat congee. I don't even know what that is. It's kind of a northern Chinese style soup. Um, it's a, kind of like a rice porridge. We put some roast pork in there with some Chinese five spice, some star anise, some scallions. In it. So you keep skiing and then see feed station four where they're serving apple cranberry crisp made by executive pastry chef Matthew Holland. <laughs> Okay, okay, it's not a dream, it's the Balsams Festival and it happens once a season next year. If you like food and you like cross-country skiing, you have to sign up. It was one of my favorite, favorite outdoor activities of our entire time here at the Balsams. Indoor activity. This is Chef Barry again. We get a little serious moment here in the kitchen. Usually I'm all fun and games, but now we're down to serious brass tacks. We had a competition amongst all the apprentices where they had to um, cook one chicken and present it to us. And out of all those, we picked two apprentices that were pretty much similar. One, um, his name's Paul, he's a freshman, and the other, Aaron, she's a sophomore. So we're gonna start through them a, uh, another kind of uh, cook-off competition. In this competition, they're gonna get four different tasks to do. They have 30 minutes to complete the task. They're gonna get judged on presentation, sanitation, um, organization and um, the finesse of the final product. So um, we're getting ready to kick this off. Uh, they're going to get two minutes to ask questions, and then it's uh, cook-off time. All right. We'll um, we'll see you on the uh, competition floor. All right. did such a good job, the scores were really close, but in the end, Paul won. He gets to travel to Ohio for the ACF Regional Conference with Chef Harmon and Chef Barry. Congrats! For our history lesson this week, we turn to a soup spoon. Decades ago, while a young lady was on her honeymoon here at the Balsams, she actually decided to steal a spoon. Many years went by, and her husband and her had children. As they grew up, she taught her children that stealing is morally wrong. Yet she still had the spoon she stole from the balsams. With the guilt of the theft weighing heavy on her mind, 30 years went by, and she ended up sending the spoon back to the balsams with a note. In the note, she exclaimed that she could keep the spoon no longer. The Balsam's management decided to take the spoon and frame it. It now hangs in the halls of the Balsam's. Next time you're here, see if you can find it. And don't steal any spoons. Dining. Good morning. This morning, guys, we're gonna be making some wonderful chocolate truffles. Uh, today, we're gonna be using milk and white. Chocolate truffles are very simple to make. It's really only three ingredients, cream, chocolate, and butter. 
Um, we start by scalding our cream and we pour it over the chocolate. Uh, we stir it up to make the ganache and we finish it with some softened butter. Taste your chocolate ganache, then put it in the fridge to set overnight. When you wake up in the morning, pull it out of the fridge and get ready to scoop and then roll. A few different uh, items here that we're going to be rolling our truffles in, and they're going to be all rolled by hand, which is my favorite way to make a truffle. We rolled our truffles in things like toasted coconut, pistachio meringue, cocoa powder, and icing sugar, but you can crush up whatever you want and roll your truffles in them. Just plate them beautifully, and then most importantly, enjoy. That's amazing. What's this one again, Chef? Just powdered sugar and cocoa, which is actually one of my favorites. Wow, what a great week. We had some great footage this week, didn't we? With this much footage, we could create a documentary. We totally could, but who would watch it? Where would we show it? The Flickers North Film Festival. Sorry about the shameless plug, but the Balsams has a film festival yeah. and I can't believe we haven't talked about it yet. I know, how cool is this? The Balsams right here host a film festival. It's called Flickers and this year it starts September 29th, 2011. You can be a part of it. So all the budding filmmakers out there watching, get ready to submit your video to Flickers North Country. Film Festival. Totally, it's going to be awesome. I okay, want to back. that's it. This is our last week. Episode 40 is done. And One more week to go. From the Balsams. And we'll be announcing our next project, which starts March 14th. Ish. <laughs> Stay tuned. It's a good one. <laughs> Bye. Oh. <laughs> Are you okay? No. What'd you do? How, do you? how can I help you? Go get... Go get someone? Just the camera. Okay. Alex and Luke. Wasn't harmed in the filming of this program.